Today we want to make a journey, a journey into understanding truth. And that process is understanding the spiritual and natural law. So what we're going to have today basically is a course in common sense. For eons, eons and eons, the story of God has been passed down from generation after generation after generation. It's been passed down as an understanding of a force, of a God with many names, and no matter what that name was, man has been in turmoil and conflict. And so today, we want to search for a truth, an understanding that will quieten the inner being within us, to give us a broader understanding of what God is. You know, God is something that we very seldom talk about. We are afraid. And so let's pause for a moment and relax. And let's take a few deep breaths. Because what I'm going to say in reference to spiritual law will push the buttons within your soul memory and bring up an alter ego, a desire to have conflict, to question. And so let's pause and let's relax. Let's imagine that you're somewhere and for the first time you're opening your eyes. It might be a jungle, forest, mountain top. It was a moment in your indigenous life when you first awoken in the morning and you saw the sun, a big, round, shining ball of light. And this sun is the center of our universe. It's like the big computer, the big God in the sky that records everything in the universe in which we live and reflects it back to us. And everything revolves around the sun. The earth, it moves around the sun. And as the earth moves around the sun, it writes the law of the universe the law of cause and effect, the law of karma. Because everything in the universe is in a cycle, a circle, just like the sun. And as the earth moves around the sun, it creates a parallel understanding of light and dark. Because as the days become longer and shorter, on each side of the hemisphere, we see the cause and effect, the folding and unfolding of light. And as the earth goes around the sun and completes a complete circle, it divides itself into four quadrants we have a point in the unseen called north. It's at 12 o'clock. We have another point that we call east, and it's at 3 o'clock. Another point that's called south at 6 o'clock, and west at 9 o'clock. And as the earth moves around the sun, it creates a pattern, a pattern of four seasons, 
a changing in frequency in terms of light and dark. And so we start at the point of 12 o'clock when we have the shortest day, the 21st of December. And on the 25th of December, the spirit is reborn. For the first time, the light goes ahead of the darkness. At 12 o'clock, that is the moment. At 3 o'clock, we have spring, and the polarity of spring is fall. Fall and spring, they are equal, a point when the days and nights are equal. At 6 o'clock, we have the completion of the cycle, the longest day, we have summer. And on summer, all the plants and the animals have completed the season of summer, and the fruit becomes ripe, and the seeds, they fall, and they're scattered. They're scattered by nature, by the wind, by the animals, by the birds, by the bees, the insects. And then the seeds fall to the ground, and the sun begins to move away on that longest day. And as the days become shorter, the energy of the sun leaves this part of the hemisphere, and the fluids in the trees begin to drain as the energy wanes. And the leaves, they begin to turn, and they fall to the ground. And as the leaves falling on the ground creates a blanket that covers the seeds as they rest in the earth. And the seeds, they lay dormant as the days become shorter and shorter. And then we reach a point when the days and nights are equal. And at the next moment, for the first time, the light will go ahead of the darkness and fall. It's an interesting time because it's a time when we can speak to the spirits, the days and nights being equal and fall, when we are enjoying the crop that we have had and the harvest of everything for us to eat. And then the seeds, they now for the first time have an expression of being in gross matter because for the first time the darkness will go ahead of the light. And then we move towards the 21st of December and the days become shorter and shorter. And we reach the point where we have the shortest day. And on the 25th of December, for the first time, the light goes ahead of the darkness and the spirit is reborn. And the seeds within the earth bring forth an energy or frequency of life as they move towards spring. And spring comes and the days and nights are equal again. And life Spring is a celebration of life, the moment when the seeds spring forth from the earth, the life. And then man has gone around the circle three quarters of the way, and the celebration of life was the understanding of the crosshairs of the cross, that at that moment was an excellent time to be on the mark to be on the one, and to be on the mark was to be without sin, to hit the center of the circle. 
And it was a celebration because for the first time, the light frequency became God realized. It became conscious of the fact that it was a God. And then summer again. Now this circle of the earth around the sun through the 12 vibrational frequencies, each quarter representing three, the completion, created an understanding of the law of duplication, the law of cause and effect. Because after the complete circle of the earth around the sun, the frequencies of all 12 vibrations are added up and it creates a new seed, a new seed, and that seed is a copy. And so life is a continuum, a continuum of cause and effect of life, that as we complete the cycle of life, we have been given the gift which is forever the law of cause and effect, the law of life. And so this understanding of the natural law, the understanding of the cycle of the moon for planting and for harvest, understanding that the moon controlled all the fluids in the universe, all the water, the hormones within your body. And as we look at everything, these 12 vibrational frequencies are written throughout all of nature, throughout everything we have done, because we have the 12 disciples plus the new consciousness, the Christ head. And so you had 12 disciples plus Christ, the new life. And you had 12 tribes. You have 12 months of the year. You have 12 planets. You have 12 years of education. You have young women reaching the seed at 12 years. You have young men completing their rite of passage at the age of 13. And so the number 13 was not a number that was referenced in good or bad. It was a spiritual number. And so when man understands the frequency, the vibration of this universe written in the evolution of the earth around the sun, as the days and nights become longer and shorter on each hemisphere, it creates a pattern in the sky. And this pattern, to put in a simplistic form, for our understanding in a linear way is what you call today the Star of David. Two reverse pyramids. And that law, that vibration, that frequency is the law for the total universe which includes all men, all the animals, all the insects, all the planets, everything in the total universe because the indigenous people believed in spirits and they believed that everything in the total universe was God, seen and unseen. And they believed that inside of every plant and animal and insect lived the living consciousness they call God. And as they went through life, they had respect for the total universe. They respected all the frequencies you call life, everything. And they gave honor and joy to each moment of their lives. And so I understand that we are living in different times. But each and every one of us are moving through what we call the great university called life. And the experiences that we are having are the experiences that each and every one of us needs. Because once you understand cause and effect, 
the absolute law in this universe. We begin to realize with an understanding that each of us are different, that there's nothing outside of ourselves, that the universe is our teacher, that all the people in the, our lives are there to teach us, teach us as our own reflection. Because if each and every one of us are different, each and every one of us see the world completely different, that you sitting behind those eyes, looking out into the world, can only know your own personal experience, can only know how you treat yourself moment by moment and day by day. And so man's understanding of cause and effect, the mirror, that God is a mirror. It's like a big copy machine. Everything is seen in his image. So whatever we imprint in the consciousness that we call God, the total universe, is reflected back to us. And it was known as the mother-father principle. There was no good and bad and right and wrong because every man was considered right for himself. Each and every one of us creates our own reality, our own truth. And in the creation of our own truth, each of us are sowing and reaping and reflecting back our own consciousness, our own mirror as to how we see ourselves and how we treat ourselves. We see our own judgment of ourselves and what we perceive to be right and wrong and good and bad and what we call sin. And that understanding, as you expand your consciousness, will temple you and make you humble. Because as you go through life, you will realize that everyone that you meet is a reflection of yourself. And then you will choose to li live as the scriptures have told you to live. If we are so religious in America and we call ourselves Christians, it's been very interesting that the principles that Christ taught was to treat your neighbor as yourself. And why did he teach that? He taught it because the only thing we could see in our own perceptional illusions was our own reflection. And he was reminding you that you were only seeing your own reflection. And so he reminded you to treat your neighbor as yourself because what you do unto your neighbor, you do unto yourself. It's a reflection. It's cause and effect. So if I raise my hand against my neighbor, that mirror reflection will be raised against me. I have to trade places. He said to judge not, yet you also be judged. So when you point your fingers at someone else, you're really seeing your own reflection. And this is the understanding, this is the truth that's written in every religion. Whether you're Buddhist, and the Buddha taught about the dream, whether you're Christ, who taught about the power within and man's oneness with God, and an understanding of the cause and effect of your relationship to man, whether it be Muhammad, all the religions, no matter what they were, whether it was Confucius, whether it was Hinduism, all of them taught a respect for all life, for all others, for compassion in your heart. Because everything that we do is mirrored back to us as a reflection so you sow, so you reap. And so man's understanding was passed down through nature as the law of the seed. And there were two basic principles that came out of spiritual law. As above, so below. As within, as without. Meaning that everything that we see in gross matter, the mother, reflected as the mother earth, everything in gross matter is equally above us. As above, so below. 
we've learned since we've had cell phones that we have wires above, just as we have wires below. The wires below, we had to dig in the ground and lay the wire. But the wires above are in light frequency and energy and spirit. But they exist as above, so below. And so everything that's taking place on the earth frequency is reflected in the earth. And so the indigenous man, the ancient one, could read all that was taking place in nature by what was being reflected in nature itself. The leaves turning colors. The leaves turning, preparing for rain. The rocks changing colors. The way, the reflection of the earth and the sun. Because the moss would grow on the north side of the tree. And so man could read the universe and know everything he needed to know by reading nature itself. You know it's surprising that we have forgotten that what we can perceive to be so important in this moment in time, called time, we think time is important. We think our calendar is important. But we've forgotten that time comes from the evolution of the earth around the sun. So the law that we live by every day called time is the evolution of the earth around the sun. And so we have forgotten, so I'm just taking this moment here not to teach, because there's nothing I can teach you. I only choose to remind you at this moment of the law of cause and effect, an absolute truth that's been forgotten in the Western culture. As above, so below, as within, as without. Although there's just this one little spark of light sitting inside of us called the soul, we seem to have forgotten, but it's there. This one spark of light, our God, the computer recording of everything that we have experienced since the beginning of time is stored in each and every one of us, our soul. And there are no two experiences in this journey alike. No two people alike. No two snowflakes alike. No two DNA alike. No two individuals alike. And in remembering that there are no two people alike, Wow, that's a heavy, heavy truth, a heavy understanding. Because if there are no two people alike, then how can we make a statement that applies to any two? If there's no two people alike other than the sacred geometry, how can we have science? Have you noticed that science each and every day is changing? It changes its rules. It changes its diagnosis. No two people alike in the total universe. And this one little spark of light called the soul that sits within you, as within, as without, is equal to the total universe. Just like the computer is equal to the total internet. Now that's a lot of power to have. The power to be equal to the total universe without limitations. The same principles that Christ taught, that man and God are one. That Buddha taught, that Muhammad taught. That's taught in the Hindu understanding. Man and God are one. The light frequency within you is equal to the total universe which means that each and every one of us are a genie, a wizard. And this frequency we call God that lives within us must do everything we ask it to do. And so our lives are a reflection of what we have asked the God within us to do. 
It must, without question. And so as we go through this journey called life, after being sick and tired of being sick and tired, many of us have reached many moments where we've made a choice to turn our lives over to this frequency we call God that lives within us. You know, I had that experience. One day I was contemplating and I said to myself, well, you know, if God lives within me, and I believe that's true, and it knows everything, past, present, and future, that's interesting. Because if that's true, then what is it that I need to know? And so I say, <laughs> You know it, God, so you take care of my life. You run it for me. And I cannot express to you the understanding of faith. Faith. Faith is an understanding that is true. That whatever you ask is done in that moment in time. One of the most difficult understandings is time. Because everything is happens in the moment, the alpha and omega, the beginning and end. Each and every moment, everything takes place in the moment. And because it takes place in the moment, there is no time. The chicken and the egg, it happens at the same time. So if one brother does unto his neighbor any harm in any way, the same reflection is mirrored back to him. He must trade places. So when brothers and sisters understand that when they shoot their brothers, they're really shooting themselves. And understanding the science of reincarnation, that life is forever in a continuum. That you must come back and sow and reap. That there is no free lunch. Then we won't raise our hands. We won't raise our guns. We won't rob. We will not steal. Because we know that cause and effect is absolute. And that we must, must without question, get a reflection or mirror of our actions. You know, many of us, myself included, feel sorry for our many brothers who are in the prisons and jails today. But each and every one of them are there because they chose to be there because of their own moment by moment actions and reactions in their lives because they have created guilt. And they feel within their own souls that they are guilty and they have chosen to be in prison. But think about and have compassion for the judge. The judge that hits the gavel on the table and, and sentence himself each and every time. Don't you know that when the judge says guilty and passes the sentence, that he's sentences, he's putting himself in jail. The sentence is against himself. He must come back in another cycle of incarnations and become each and every one of those people. The woman who's being raped. She was once the raper. The law of cause and effect is absolute. The raper and the rapee are the same. For every action it's equal and opposite. So a man today goes out and rapes a woman. He must trade places. He must become that woman. And another life. And be raped. By a man. The same man that he is in this moment in time. The law of cause and effect. And so everything is a mirror reflection. And so as we go through life. The secret and understanding life. Is to respect all individuals. Respect the total universe. Respect every man's right to be different. To respect every man's right to live his own illusion without judgment. 
That's the gift that you give yourself. And when you give it yourself, you can give it to others. And as we do that, we can move to make changes in our lives, changes in our society, our education system. What difference does it make if you could memorize the Encyclopedia Britannica from front to back, you knew every word in the Webster Dictionary and every meaning? What difference would it make? What difference would it make if you didn't have any common sense? If you didn't understand that you had a relationship to the universe, that what you did unto the mother you do unto yourself, that we have poisoned the mother and we put chemicals on she, and we've gone outside of nature to look for herbs in terms of medicine, forgetting that the universe created everything we needed. That the indigenous understanding was that there was a plant and an animal and an insect there created by the universal consciousness called God that applied to every part of the body, that it vibrated at a certain frequency to match the heart and the kidney and the liver and the spleen, every part of the body. And this frequency, this energy, my goodness, it was so simple. And man would ask the God that lived within each plant and animal to facilitate him in the healing of his body. And so we would understand in education that when we come here on this earth plane with a soul, we come with a computer chip since the beginning of time, which means we already know everything and there's nothing new to learn rather than an understanding that we know nothing and we need to be taught. This incarnation, each cycle of life is about remembering our experiences and forgiving ourselves for our judgments as we move moment by moment. And so education is about common sense. And common sense is not about degrees. It's about respect for the universe. And then there's our health. Because we've forgotten that the creative consciousness called God that lives within us controls our health 100%. There are no pills that can help you. If you are sick right now, if you are an individual in pain, it's because you have chosen the pain as a personal punishment for your moment by moment existence in life. That as you've gone through life moment by moment, these are the things that you have said are good and bad in reference to your life. And when you commit sin, this frequency or energy is stored within the consciousness of the body and it coagulates. There are no germs, there are no bacteria. All that germ theory that came a few years ago in this illusion called time, it was just the Western understanding and search for truth. It wasn't a good or bad journey. The things we have done to get to this point weren't good or bad, right or wrong. What's taking place in the world today is not negative or positive, good or bad. It just is. There are no mistakes. This total universe, completely at this moment in time, no mistakes at all. Everyone is sowing and reaping, getting back a reflection of his own consciousness based on how he sees the world. So the only thing we can do in terms of our health is to love ourselves and to health. If you're sick, it's because you have sickness within your own soul in terms of your personal judgment. And you have to atone or forgive yourself to remove the judgment Understanding that the moments you had were experiences, not good or bad experiences, experiences that you created. And if you choose not to create them anymore because they cause you pain, just choose not to repeat them. But don't look back. 
Because the moment you look back and analyze who, where, what, and look outside of yourself to blame someone else, you have to repeat it again. It's a parable in the Bible in reference to a young lady turning to salt or stone. And so understanding and living life is simple when you have common sense. When you have a common understanding of God, of cause and effect, of a universal law that no man can write a law intellectually in any Congress or court or state house or city council that can override spiritual law. I cannot pass a law to wear my seatbelt as though this law can save me from my destiny. I mean, where's our common sense gone? We think we can pass laws to change the destiny of others? Oh, how ridiculous. And so here we are, living in the most fantastic time ever to be alive. A moment as we move into the age of Aquarius, an age of prosperity and peace and harmony and love. Here we are, the greatest time to be alive, to witness the earth ascension as the earth purifies and cleanses itself for all the abuse that we've put on it during this last 26,000 year cycle. The cycle happens every 26,000 plus or minus years. And we can temper the experience that we will experience as the earth heals itself. We're in for some interesting times. I'm looking forward to great joy in myself because I've chosen not to judge. I've chosen to live unconditional love and respect for all men in all forms of life. I can't remember when the last time I've killed an insect or a fly that I've looked at someone in anger where I've walked in fear. I've chosen not to lock my doors of my car and my home. I've chosen not to protect anything material because we cannot take anything away from here material. We know we can't take no money away, no houses, and boats and cars but it is one thing that we too do take with us when we leave at that moment we experience what we call death and that's we take the soul soul is always with us it follows us 100% of the time and when we understand that the fine tuning of our spiritual self within our soul will become primary as it is today in our civilization. And so I say to you as we move forth in the days ahead and what you perceive to be time, that we do the best we can to unconditionally love ourselves. And that we stop and pause and remember the times when we lived a spiritual moment and that we live one with nature and one with God when you do your life is wow the expression of heaven on earth it's an interesting one because you can live in peace and harmony and love right here among all this turmoil understanding there's no death Understanding that what's taking place in the Middle East was meant to be. That each and every one of them have written their own personal script. That every man and woman in the total universe is having the experience that they are supposed to have for themselves in each moment in time. And there's nothing to fix. That God, the creative consciousness, doesn't need your help. 
and that the creative energy called God lives within you. And you become more conscious of your prayers. As you say, our Father who art within in heaven, you will reverse an understanding that our Father who art within me is a very interesting one. And then as you see God within yourself, your body changes in terms of it's becoming a temple rather than just a body. A temple that your God lives in. And then your kids, they'll begin to respect their temples. And they won't put drugs in their body, not because the drugs are good or bad, but because they honor the temple. And the relationships they have with others, sexually and otherwise, will be more respected and respectful as to the frequencies that they share. Life is simple. Each of us need only take our head out of the sand and take a look around and we see forests and trees and we can see the forests and the trees because we can see the polarity, the cause and effect. And so it's simple. Judge not yet you also be judged. The kingdom of heaven is within you and man and God are one. And treat your neighbor as yourself because what you do unto your neighbor you do unto yourself. And the things I do you shall also do and more remembering that you carry the Christ consciousness within you. The understanding of the God within is the challenge of this civilization. May your journey in life be peaceful. Have respect and love for each other. Peace.